Hi guys, welcome back. So I've been watching the seven part uh, series called The Keepers on Netflix, as I'm sure a lot of you probably have. It's kind of become like a sensation because it's an extremely well done series. It's fascinating. I, I definitely found it compelling and I think uh, not only was the subject matter really interesting, but just the way it was done was masterful, you know? And I know a lot of that probably has to do with the fact that Netflix produced it as in Netflix funded it to an extent, to my knowledge. But it's it's a pretty darn good series, and uh, I, I definitely thought it was fascinating. It was one of the one of the better um, docu series type, you know, topical expose shows that I've seen in quite a while. You might also be wondering what happened to my face. Um, it looks like I got ready for September the eighth a little early. That's a that's a joke because I look like a clown. Okay, so I have I have glitter makeup like glitter eyeshadow that I bought from Hot Topic back in like early high school and I want to get rid of it but it's a nightmare to apply and it's also a nightmare to to have to have on my face I am I'm deeply shamed by this um, spectacle but that's not relevant at all is it well I think the keepers was a phenomenal series and I think that it's done a lot of good in raising awareness about a case that has more or less gone cold and, you know, has, has never truly been solved. There were a lot of extremely disturbing reactions on the internet when I started researching the different social media accounts for this series, uh, for the creators, you know, and contributors to this series. Some of the ways that people have reacted to the show are deeply troubling to me, and I kind of want to go into that here. It will come as a shock to everyone that Esquire described this series as highlighting the evils of white power. Vox, for example, considers the Keepers to be much like the series Making a Murderer, which is deeply concerning to me because Vox goes on to talk about how, how fascinating the series is and how valuable it is in that it uncovers so much information about a crime, when anybody who has even the minutest amount of common sense knows that the only person who made Stephen Avery a murderer was Stephen Avery. Another example of somebody completely misconstruing the entire point of the series was Reddit user Perusal, who said, I vow to never enter a Catholic building again. Uh, these are just a few of the many examples of the responses to the series that I think are very worrisome and things that I think should be pointed out as this series gains popularity and as it does rightfully. Now when I looked into the creator of this documentary, Ryan White, he didn't seem to really have any specific like political bias or any agenda. Uh, he does say that he went into this because he had family members who went to school and were taught by Sister Kathy, and Kathy Sesnick is kind of the main person that the investigation centers on. When asked in a Reddit AMA what he hopes will come of the series, he said, I hope the Keepers fosters conversation awareness and some sort of accountability and justice, even if it continues to be outside the court system. These are brave souls that deserve better. So he genuinely seems to be a well-meaning person who, who made this documentary for good reason. Also researching him, I found that he has made documentaries on The Secretary for the Beatles, on Serena Williams, and on Prop 8 in California, which was about same-sex marriage. So there really doesn't seem to be any specific political agenda that Ryan White would have any reason to be pushing. It just seems like he makes very high quality documentaries about different subjects that he finds compelling. One of the things that really bothered me about this series is that there really wasn't any political bias until the last episode and maybe a half, and it seemed like pretty much the last half of the seventh and final episode just put a political spin on things and sort of used them to push a narrative. I don't know necessarily whether Ryan White meant to do this or not, and I'm aware that a lot of the people who were willing to speak were on one side of this issue. A lot of the defense lawyers and a lot of the other parties involved refused, supposedly, um, repeated attempts at interviews. People just didn't want to talk, and if you're not willing to give your side of the story and the other people are, you know, um, one side is going to get a lot more exposure, one side is going to seem much more sympathetic because they're willing to speak candidly to an audience about the issue and about why they believe what they believe and which side they're on. That disclaimer being made, I categorize my problems into three specific 
categories. The first being the naive demonization of lawyers. It is not a lawyer's job to decide who is right or what the just ruling in any case may be. The Sixth Amendment guarantees every citizen a right to an attorney. A lawyer's job is to represent their client, period. They do not always have the luxury of choosing their clients, and often lawyers never know whether the person they're representing is telling them the whole truth or not. Depicting and perceiving defense lawyers as evil, horrible people is a huge misattribution of the duties of the justice system that belong to the jury and the judge. You are expecting something of defense lawyers that is the responsibility of other facets of the justice system. This is not something that I think this documentary specifically is solely responsible for, but the fact that I have to explain to you what a lawyer's job is, is horrifying. The public should understand this. This should not come from a 24-year-old secretary. If you think that it's a lawyer's job to decide who is right and wrong and to act accordingly, you don't understand how jobs work, let alone how being a lawyer works. Everyone has the right to an attorney, a constitutional right. This is something extremely important that the public in general does not seem to comprehend when it comes to joking about lawyers being these awful, dishonest people who are intentionally uh, vying for and, and trying to create miscarriages of justice. Some of the people interviewed did what is my second grievance, which is accusing political opponents of blaming victims. This series is about sexual abuse and the abuse of authority by figures in the Catholic Church and how the Catholic Church has repeatedly tried to cover this up and tried to defend clergy members against heinous, atrocious acts that have been attributed to them. However, several of the people interviewed and the way in which these interviews and various pieces of media were spliced together create the narrative that political opponents are blaming rape victims. When individuals concerning this case advocated for not lengthening the statute of limitations on rape allegations. This again is a misattribution of responsibility. It's also a gross oversimplification and appeal to emotion to interpret arguments for preserving the current statute of limitations as blaming victims of sexual assault for sexual assault. It is a factual claim that if a victim comes forward with allegations against a perpetrator of sexual abuse, the likelihood is increased that that perpetrator will have far less of a chance to offend in the future. If one interprets that fact as blaming the victims for their attacker's crimes, that interpretation is solely the responsibility of the party making it. Any distress or outrage at that fact being projected onto the individuals who invoke it when speaking on any issue is done so unfairly, illogically, and irresponsibly. The last point is not so much about the show itself, but it is about the social media of the show. One of the tweets that was directed at the Keeper's Twitter account and that was retweeted by the account said, just as a complete blanket statement with no strings attached, believe girls. This generalization, though most likely well-meaning, is a horrifyingly thoughtless one. First off, it's obviously an exclusion of male victims, which is made even more peculiar by the fact that the first person that we know Reverend Maskell abused, who was interviewed in the show, was a male. It's even more disturbing because it completely contradicts the principle of innocence until you are proven guilty, which is the entire foundation on which America's justice system was built. Believing all allegations of sexual assault or abuse by default does no more good to victims of actual sexual assault than it does to the innocent who are accused. The series itself wholly acknowledges that someone can entirely believe that a trauma was inflicted upon them that never happened. The example invoked in the show was a woman who on film relived the horrors of a gang rape that never happened to her. People can truly believe that someone assaulted them without it ever actually having happened. While it certainly doesn't seem, and while I certainly don't suspect, that this is something that happened to any of the victims who came forth against Reverend Maskell in this series. An individual can experience completely real trauma when the thing that they believe traumatized them may not have happened. That does not make the scale and the depth of their grief any less authentic. 
Overall, I think the series is phenomenal, and I think the amount of evidence posed is almost irrefutable. I also recognize that it has been proven many times that there is horrible abuse of authority um, that is translated into sexual abuse within the Catholic Church that the Catholic Church has covered up and has not responded to in a way that they are legally and morally obligated. However, what troubles me so much is that the pretty obvious political bias that was injected into the last hour and a half or so of this documentary could quite possibly cheapen the authenticity of the testimony that victims brought forth and could compromise how believable they are and how credible people perceive them to be. Lawyers are not horrible evil people because they are doing their job and fulfilling their crucial role in the justice system. When lawmakers and other advocates point out that an offender has less of a chance of being able to reoffend when prior victims come forth sooner, that is not those people, those lawmakers, blaming victims for heinous crimes. It's not. And if you think that, if you think that pointing that fact out is blaming victims, that's entirely your problem because that's not at all what is being done and if you are angry at a fact i don't know what to tell you but punishing people who are trying to do the right thing and who are invoking valid facts when making their arguments is completely naive and childish and honestly it's dishonest and finally the fact that the official twitter account for this docu-series actually has perpetuated the idea that you need to believe girls just just flat out just like that is dumbfounding because as i said it completely contradicts the idea of the show the show is about a miscarriage of justice the show is about finding the truth while i think that under no circumstances should you be cruel to or reject someone when they come forth with allegations while i think that morally it is your duty to protect that person and get them help, get them medical help, protect them, do everything within your power to console them in that moment and to make sure that they cannot be harmed, that does not mean that you assume someone's guilt until it's proven in a court of law. And I don't understand why their official account would retweet something like this when in the show, one of the problems that they point out with some of these victims coming forth is that it is completely possible to believe that trauma was inflicted upon you that never happened. Again, this is not me making any kind of accusations against any of the witnesses or any of the victims that came forth on the series. However, I, I think that it's irresponsible to inject a political bias. You are discrediting all of the people who have come forth who are affiliated with and included within your series. The fact that there are still people out there who don't know <laughs> What happened in the Stephen Avery case, the fact that there are so many people who still believe the narrative of making a murderer that also think that this series is so great and believable terrifies me because it shows to me that people are not willing to do their research. People are not interested in intellectual responsibility, honesty, and integrity. Thank you guys so much for watching this. Uh, please let me know what you think if you've also seen the series. I hope more people kind of pick up on this because I think this is as much of an important dialogue to have as is, you know, what really happened in this case. I do really recommend this series because it's completely fascinating and it's just done in a masterful way. I wish you guys all the best. Uh, I will leave some of the links below to some of the creepy stuff that I've seen that makes me think that people are not at all rationally evaluating this kind of thing when they watch it. And uh, I will see you again soon. Bye.